Star Wars Fury is a channel who became popular for his content circulating through the Star Wars universe, where he explored the facts and deeper lore, along with him creating his what-if scenarios. But what Fury is most known for is the Vader fan film he had created using the resources afforded to him out of his own pocket, highlighting the creativity he is capable of, which propelled him into becoming the most influential Star Wars creator on the platform, dawning an audience of over 3 million subscribers. But throughout his career, there have been many times where he has been at the center point for drama within the community, whether this had been by creating issues where there aren't any, or when journalists are looking to condemn Fury for their own misunderstanding of the situation. But in each and every case, Fury responds with emotions flaring, which only leads to a resolution if the opposition bends the knee and kisses his ring. And this emotional blindness has only led to him accusing someone for creating a hate campaign against him. So join me as we delve into the Star Wars community and cover the lore of Star Wars Fury and beyond. Let him cover now! I will not be denied. Since the beginning, Fury had done an exceptional job of providing people an encyclopedia of lore, history and knowledge on everything Star Wars. If you ever found yourself pondering over something you weren't quite sure of, chances are, Star Wars Fury had the answers waiting for you on his channel, as he explained a wide variety of facts within that universe. And not only that, but Fury, like the name suggests, had even explored the fan fiction side of things, with one in particular being, what if Vader had gotten addicted to Bacta? Even though the video isn't meant to be taken seriously and is just a parody of itself, it's still a good listen and it's one of my favourites from his channel, which isn't the only time he dabbled in comedy as he also made his Once Upon a Theory with references to other films in and out of Star Wars. It too is worth a watch. But his biggest feat to this day is none other than Vader Episode 1 Shards of the Past. But before we get to that, in 2017 The Last Jedi had released and with it came a whole new wave of people who hated the new Star Wars films, and those who were critical of it. And Episode 8 is infamous for being the driving force behind what split the fandom into two sides, which had played a role in why Star Wars Fury chose to remain as a mediator in covering the shows, being objective as to not be labelled as a shill for being too positive, or as a hater for being too negative. When The Last Jedi had come out, Fury had said that he thoroughly enjoyed the film, saying it was great and how he would watch it again just so he could see Luke and his flashbacks again. I would see the film twice just for those two flashbacks alone because there's such an uncovered part of the timeline that we never got to see. And it had been no different when The Rise of Skywalker had come out, with Fury thinking it was a sick film. Star Wars is back, baby. In my opinion, <laughs> it was really amazing. This was really an exceptional ending. <laughs> and I really enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed the film. However, Fury later down the line had changed his opinion on the sequels, which I think is fine. I think Fury should be free to like or dislike the films without there being any sort of stigma involved with that. Although I just wish Fury could break down how his opinion on the films had changed, as at the moment it just seems like he started disliking them because George Lucas had shown his disdain for Disney Star Wars. When creating his own fan film, Fury had been transparent with the fans by uploading dozens of videos dedicated to showing the full work they had been putting into the film, which had been, and still is, a masterclass in fan creativity with the sets, locations, and the story. However, his fans had given him a bit of a pushback on these videos, as they wanted to see more of the theories and lore Star Wars Fury had to offer, even though they were looking forward to the finished product, and Fury had toned down on the behind-the-scenes aspect, not allowing it to overtake the rest of his content he was known for. But once the video had come out, Fury had gone the extra mile by setting up a premiere to the film in a theatre so people could meet him and the people who helped in bringing his artistic vision to life, which had released on the 22nd of December 2018. And over the course of 24 hours, the film had been viewed by 1 million people and still is his most popular video to date with 29 million views. 
which is very deserved, and this would set the standard for his fan films moving forward. However, Fury would find making the next one to be a more difficult task than first realised. The fan film had done a great job at displaying the inner turmoil within Vader's mind, along with showing the true horror of Vader's reality, which is something I would like to see more from Fury. Perhaps in the future he can delve even further into that side of Darth Vader's story, by exploring the psychological aspect of Vader replaying the past within his mind with warm and loving memories, maybe even looking at what could have been if Anakin never turned to the dark side, and Padme had been saved from the fate he had feared so much, only for him to be brought back to his cold and harsh reality, which would add more sympathy to the character as well. The one decision that Fury had was to get a composer to create renditions of the soundtracks from the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy, which is a nice touch, but this would set the stage for his first controversy, since Fury had to fund the project himself as his connections within Lucasfilms had specifically told him he wasn't allowed to monetize it or to crowd fund the film in any way, which became even more perplexing when he had received a copyright claim for the Imperial March, which Fury went over in a video talking about how it felt hurtful and vindictive and how he believed at first that this was by Disney's design, but assured the viewers that it's not about the money for him but the principle of it, since he wasn't allowed to get anything back from making the film out of respect for the company. In the next video, Fury updates us by saying it wasn't actually Disney who filed the claim, but a company who has a licensing agreement with them by the name of Warner Chappell. And in the last video, he says that Lucasfilms had gotten them to remove the claim and withdraw from it altogether, which the usage of the song would fall under fair use in my opinion, since it's only 5-10 to 10 seconds long. However, in these videos, Fury also claims that this is only happening to him and no one else, since there are reaction videos to the film existing on YouTube, which is an assumption, as he would have no way of knowing that if that had or hadn't happened to another creator without reaching out. Just because you don't see it, doesn't mean it doesn't happen to others. Question is, why aren't you going after all the other reaction videos that have made reactions to the movie? Why are you singling me out? What did I do? But for someone who wanted to prevent more claims coming through, he certainly wasn't being careful when reacting to the entirety of the featurettes from both Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. But perhaps Fury had some commentary to offer, perhaps some insight into the work that goes into creating these films, or perhaps something he can pull from in his time of covering the Star Wars lore to explain things further. So what did Fury add to the featurettes, you may ask? That was for Return of the Jedi. Such insight! See, in a good reaction video, you are supposed to give a reaction rather than just sitting there twiddling your thumbs wishing you were somewhere else. At this point, Fury, I would be willing to say that your reactions are just as valuable as Sniper Wolves. Since most of the video is just you watching the content rather than engaging with it. Are we doing these watch parties? People are like, why does he look bored? It's like, bro. <laughs> they want me to watch it like this. As we come into 2019, we are presented with something that Star Wars Fury takes very seriously, and that is cyberbullying. We had seen that a member of the Star Wars community had been getting picked on by other YouTubers because of a reaction he had to a trailer for The Rise of Skywalker. Stop it! Come He's on. vibrating! He's vibrating! You haven't even seen anything yet. <laughs> this is actually kind of disturbing. Gorgeous. 
It's rocks. It's rocks. Dirt. <laughs> it's rocks and desert. <laughs> okay, I, 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 I'm sorry, but maybe this will be like a little harsh, but this guy strikes me as like someone who is so emotionally and mentally unhinged that he might be like a potential school shooter. Wow. Well, I mean, um, look at him. He's sobbing over three seconds of like a trailer. I probably there's this probably is, a lot of people who did that. Honestly, a, a people trailer? are weird. People are weird when it comes to Star Wars. They're weird. Which led Fury into drawing a line in the sand with this video, standing up for the bullied Star Wars guy. We're gonna get pretty deep in this one. Um, Star Wars isn't just Star Wars. Uh, it's it's much more than that. It's uh, it's sure it's a cool story and everything, but at the end of the day, it's an escape for people who aren't necessarily happy with reality because let's be honest your reality kind of sucks yeah the guy who owns a three hundred thousand dollar lamborghini is telling us how much life sucks life's not fair is it i mean look at this what's the difference he just he's excited he's happy he's you know he's enjoying it he's loving it he's, an, he's escaping to that galaxy far far away maybe his life sucks maybe he doesn't like his reality and reality is subjective you know i'm gonna get a little morpheus on you guys what is is reality really at the end of the day it is what you make it what you want it to be theory in this video shows that he has the ability to show empathy for those within the community since he had been bullied in school as well for liking star wars but here it's not that deep anything you put on the internet can be used for commentary criticism or comedic purposes it's the same when someone makes an absurd argument and speaking of theory tries to claim that people like this are holding the fan base back because they can't be who they want to be out of fear of being mocked. At the end of the day, I feel like people should be able to like what they want to like and not feel oppressed what? and like they have to suppress this enjoyment of how they want to how they want to be, you know, whether not to get political, but whether it's it's your race or your sexual orientation or what you enjoy in life, you should be able to do whatever you want to do without the internet or without these bullies who are at the end of the day just very insecure to come and try and gang up on you. And, you know, I stand with all Star Wars fans, all people who get bullied and feel uh, oppressed, like they can't be who they wanna be. And I felt like that. It's like what PewDiePie said a while ago, that if you're gonna make these types of videos, then you have to learn how to laugh at yourself and roll with the punches, rather than acting like everyone's out to get you. Moving on, Fury had brought out a new video going over his struggles in regards to raising the necessary funds for a new fan film, where he tells us that he is working very hard to provide his fans with the next episode. However, he also tells us that whenever he sees negative comments, he doesn't mind them because he sees it all just to be criticism. I had great comments as usual, I had bad comments as usual, and I don't take this necessarily personally, but I like to take it as criticism. However, we will see that Fury cannot handle criticism when he is under the microscope. However, in 2020, Fury had spoken more on the second fan film, announcing the beginning of his production, but disaster had struck since the pandemic had begun, which certainly halted production as most were told to stay at home and only leave if absolutely necessary, which can be seen as to why Fury opted, instead of making another live-action film, he would make an animated one to continue his story. And he soon gave everyone a sneak peek into the next fan film with Vader Episode 2, Mace Windu Returns, and in its presentation, it was clear that this was going to be a film that no Star Wars fan was going to miss, where the visuals had once again been stunning and the atmosphere was perfect for the setting, leaving Fury's fans eagerly awaiting for the finished product. This mean Jedi is attacking poor old me! Ah, eat lightning, Windu! Help me, Anakin! Crackle, crackle! But funnily enough, just like Eric, Fury had found people making fun of his emotional reaction to the second season finale of The Mandalorian, where Fury had seen one person in particular had responded to the Twitter thread, and so he made a video going over it, where he tells us that Pablo Hidalgo had made fun of him, that he was gaslighting the people on the thread, and of how this online behaviour was bad for the brand and had absolutely nothing to do with Fury being thin-skinned. 
I think it doesn't look good for the brand of Star Wars. I don't think it looks good for Lucasfilm or Disney or what they preach about inclusivity. It's very unprofessional. It's very wrong. You should be better than this. You're very high up in uh, one of the biggest companies in the world and making some real cool stuff. So I would have expected better from you to treat your fans with more respect. What did Pablo do? He tweeted on the thread, emotions are not to be shared. What a terrible person. But it didn't end there, as Pablo had seen the uproar over something he called self-mockery and sarcasm. So he tried to contact Fury by emailing him his own number, only for Fury to ignore him, instead of trying to resolve this like an adult, and instead made a second video going over the situation where he told his fellow peers that he feels like people in higher positions of power need to be held accountable. And, you know, I do think that everyone, especially people in, you know, high points of power should be held accountable for the things that they say to the people who are really supporting their projects. When you say things, it's out there and it's done. And for me, I said what I said in response to that. I gave Pablo, you know, six hours to um, explain what was going on before, you know, uploading anything, posting anything, jumping to conclusions. And when he got wind of that, you know, he posted the entire tweet, which, you know, was on a thread that was all about mocking me and making fun of me, um, as his Twitter banner. So I took that as, okay, well, this guy's really pushing, you know, <laughs> he's really just doing something that's not cool. And you shouldn't be doing that to a fan, regardless um, of anything. I could understand if this had been Pablo mocking Fury for grieving the loss of a friend or a family member, but over a TV show? Don't you think this is a tad bit overdramatic? But he then says that he won't bend to this, and yet he expects everyone else to bend over backwards to meet his meticulous needs. But then Fury tells us that he has supposedly seen Pablo doing this to others. And I've seen him supposedly do this in the past to many people. Fury, that doesn't make any sense. Did you see it or didn't you? Do I have to inform you what supposedly means? But then he says that while supposedly seeing these acts of mockery being bestowed onto others, he sat back and did nothing until it happened to him. And I didn't talk about it. I didn't make any mention of it. I was doing my thing and the way that I make sure that I know when to strike is by really waiting and observing until it's the right moment. And this was the right moment for me to fight back. And remembering all of those people and standing up for all of them. And I even gave him the benefit of the doubt and I waited for that. And then he posted on his Twitter banner, no, 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 no. You're not gonna play me like that. However, the other two in this call were only here to reinforce the narrative that Pablo had been this awful person. And in doing so, they are enabling this mentality when they should have really just told him to get over it. And it comes across as petty and rather embarrassing. It's not like Pablo told Fury to off himself or had done something nefarious on Twitter. This is just creating issues where there are none, and it's incredibly childish. Here I am, Pablo Hidalgo, completely absent-minded of my impact on uh, talking in this thread. Here I am, Pablo Hidalgo, completely absent-minded of the possible consequences of, you know, no, no, dude, no, no. He's Pablo Hidalgo, the troll. He's Pablo Hidalgo, the one that's been doing this for three years. That's who he is. If it looks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, it is a duck. Yeah, that's the whole power responsibility thing. You're absolutely right. And it's like, this guy's a role model the power responsibility thing. If that's the case, then why don't you guys hold Fury to the same standards, seeming as he is the most influential Star Wars channel out there, as he certainly doesn't hold himself to that same standard for the things he says and does online. Don't get me wrong, I think Fury, just like anyone, has the right to express himself in any way, shape or form, but this is imposing standards onto others, but just not themselves. So why should we expect more from someone just because they so happen to work for Lucasfilm? Films. It's the old, you can't do this, but we, well, we can do as we please. I find it interesting that if Fury had some genuine concerns about Pablo's conduct online, then why didn't he just contact his connections and Lucasfilms instead of going public? But as I said before, it's because Fury acts out of emotions alone, jumping headfirst into these dialogues without even thinking the whole thing through first. Remember when Fury had spoken on how he views negative comments as criticism? I had great comments as usual, I had bad comments as usual, and I don't take this necessarily personally, but I like to take it as criticism. 
Well, in 2021, he had a group call with his fellow peers, and it just so happens that one of the creators had been a fan of his work, who gave him a bit of criticism for the way he talks about certain topics, where the critique had been that Fury gives his take on things, but talks about them like it's a fact, rather than just his opinion. What's the I problem? Think we have, well, I just think we have a weird perception on, like you as uh, as the biggest creator in the space. I think there is a different set of responsibilities. Like I really am on your side with like, as you, you should be your own person, but it's sort of the same thing with, uh, you know, I don't want, I'm not gonna get overtly political, but like with the president of the United States, like in the constitution, there's a, a line called high cri for high crimes and misdemeanors. And the high isn't for the severity of the crime, but the level of the office. And you being the biggest Star Wars creator, I think you do have a different set of responsibilities. And I would never want you to feel like you're censoring yourself because you do have to be true to yourself. But I, I always use the example, like you, know, you were talking about with Jay. I, I don't know why there's a stigma on using the word I so much. And like when you express your opinions, like using I and just like when you say, I hate The Last Jedi or The Last Jedi is trash, those are two very different statements. If you say I, that's your opinion. We can have a conversation. If you say something like a fact, then it, it comes across in a different way. And like me, as someone who like really loves all of Star Wars too, when you're making certain implications about the way these films were created and imply that I don't know Star Wars because this isn't what Star Wars is, like, I, I love Star Wars. Like I have read so many books and so many comics and I love every single trilogy. And sometimes it's just like hard to listen to and I wanna love your content and I wanna engage with the community, but sometimes I feel like I'm being ostracized or put out because of the way you phrase things. So by me having an opinion, I'm not upholding my due diligence or responsibility. No, no it's the way it's the way we express opinions, I think. We can have conversations. Right. Like I I totally respect your opinion that you don't like some of the stuff that I like, but it's all about for me the way we talk to each other. It's, you're, you're, it's... You're, 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 you're essentially telling me to censor myself. You're saying don't censor yourself, but you're saying censor yourself because you have a certain moral obligation because you have a certain number of people that subscribe to your videos that you have to say things in a certain manner or shift your way in a certain way of thinking that aligns with everybody so you're all inclusive. I feel like Fury needs to hire someone to be a criticism interpreter as Fury clearly misunderstood Levi's point. Levi's criticism had been about the way he presents his opinion. This isn't about censorship, is criticism of the way you talk about topics. Since Levi had felt like Fury talks in a way that presents his opinion like it's a fact. I don't like well, The Last Jedi. I don't, I don't have to so. feel I have to no, tailor what I have that. to say in order to make you feel better about liking it or not liking yeah. it. If you come to my channel, you get real, and that's what you will always get. If I don't like a movie, I'm going to tell my fans straight up, I don't like a movie. If you can't discern the fact and the difference between I think this movie is shit versus this movie is shit as fact or not fact. Fact is irrelevant. Fact is something that is a bias to you and me. Your facts are different than my facts. So for you to come here and, and um, out of the blue and start saying that you all of a sudden have problems with my channel and then go no, on to I, a tangent man, about just, things no, that just, you don't like I'm about my here, channel. Man. I, I no, you're, you're, no, you, you, I had someone invite you on here and all of a sudden you start saying that you have a problem with my channel I'm and I ask you I, what the problem is and you start giving me all these different quotes and things like that about Star Wars. How we need to be more like Qui-Gon Jinn and, not, and oh, it's man, like, I, no, I'm not Anakin. I'm not Qui-Gon Jinn. I'm a Star Wars fan. I'm a guy who has his opinions and I don't have to tailor what I say in a way that you like or don't like. If Listen, you don't like it, you don't have to watch. No, I mean, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to. You did mean, I, I you did this. mean. It was, a, it was a conversation that was completely irrelevant towards me or my channel or whatever. And all of a sudden you start talking about my channel and you well, think I'm just I gonna think... sit here? And it was prepared. No. And it was prepared. No. Well, actually, Josh, I don't think he was quite prepared to deal with an emotional toddler on that day. You and prepared way, that shit and you were no. ready to say it. Come I'll on, just man. say this too. Come on, it's, man. I, it's no, 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 no. Don't you can't you can't no you I can't don't. yeah, that's great. <clears throat> that's great. And you can't play the victim card now, which is what a lot of people do whenever they do say something about me. And then I answer back. Fury gets a little bit of soft criticism, and the man has an emotional meltdown. And this is the same guy who says he is thick skinned. 
Basically, Fury wants to be able to say whatever he wants, however he wants, and doesn't want to deal with any form of criticism people might have for him. What, what specifically, just just to get more to the heart of the issue, you know, you have problems because you say he's he's the biggest and therefore he has the obligation. So is it literally as simple as you want him to colloquially speak the same way you do so that it makes perfect sense to you that he's respecting the platform because that's like super selfish dude that doesn't I mean, even make sense i think you put me in a little bit of a, a box there josh josh is really trying to gaslight levi into thinking that it had been selfish to give fury criticism about the way he talks about topics because they didn't like what he had to say you see we all don't like being criticized for our work or what we do online but i think it's important to see from the other side how some people may perceive you or your actions and in listening to criticism it will help you to improve upon yourself as a creator or to improve your videos or craft. And I would have thought since Fury brags about being a humble creator, he would have taken the criticism on the chin like a humble person would. But in his world, anyone who gives him criticism are only doing so because they want to tear him down or to shut him up when that isn't always going to be the case, and it's important to recognize the difference between simply hating on someone and giving them criticism. And it's something that the Star Wars community have often struggled with in recognizing what is genuine hate for the shows and what is genuine criticism for the shows. I put you in a box. I said, John, I don't, no, I don't I, think I, anyone's putting you in a box. I think you came in here and threw us in a box. No, I'm, I'm sorry you feel that way. No, I, no, that's not an apology. You... That's that's just you saying, I'm sorry I feel that way. That is how I feel because that's what you did. No, I, I'm sorry I made you feel that way. I didn't mean to. And I, I recognize now that I may have come in a little too strong because I, you know, been thinking about this watching from the outside in. Why I would you even come in here and start talking about how you don't like my channel, have problems with my channel? How did you think that was going to turn out? Well, I read the last time you brought people. I don't know. I've never seen you before. I have no clue who you are, and this is your first impression. You want to come for the record? But well, I don't remember. I'm, I'm sorry. I, yeah, I'm not. Why didn't you tell me then before that you have a problem with my channel, but you choose to come here publicly and say you have a problem with my channel in front of two thousand people? I didn't. I didn't. Now is when you like choose that. to in, do that. In the in the past, you had brought on people. You said, "Let's debate." You know, I want people who have issues with me, or so just so to speak. Yeah, we're not you know, doing that right now. We're them. talking about Star Wars. That's you came right. in sorry, here and started just... talking about the things that you're doing, which is great. I want to highlight smaller channels, but then you started twisting it and saying you have a problem with my channel. No, I, I wanted. I did. I wanted to say that I had not oh, with your whole channel. I think you make some really great content. Your we animations can run it are back. superb. Well then, don't watch. Size, it's very simple. No, I want to watch though. Way. I want to see us. I want to see us communicate with the fact that you're doing like here is great. No, there's a difference between communicating and coming in here randomly and saying that you have a problem with me. Levi didn't do anything wrong in this scenario. He had criticism for Fury, spoke in a respectful and calm demeanor, highlighted what the issue had been for him, and provided a way for him to solve the issue, which is constructive. But Fury responds with emotions flaring and acting like Levi had just attacked him, which Fury had elaborated the next day that the criticism did feel like an attack when the two of them had a conversation about it. However, the criticism may have been left field, but that doesn't mean it had been an attack. When the age of Levi gets brought up, Fury says that when he was his age, he didn't know his head from his ass, which he does say isn't a representation of Levi, just so we are clear, but he then says that he has changed significantly since he was that age. I think the biggest thing, and I, and obviously you took it as an, as an attack, and you, so you were defending yourself, and so I'm well, so let, sorry. No, no, I, I, mean, I, I yeah, I'm oh, sorry. Let me, yeah, I, I, I completely accept your apology, and I know you're, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? I am 19 years old. Yeah, so when I was 19, and this isn't a representation on you or anything, I didn't know my head from my ass. I changed so much since the age of 19. And the amount of <laughs> character evolution that happens between 19 and uh, 30 is monumental. But I don't think that's quite true, judging by all the stuff that we have seen and have yet to see, Fury has still got some growing up to do. Fury then wants Levi to elaborate on the criticism he had for him, which puts Levi in a difficult spot, considering when he gave Fury a little bit of criticism the day before, Fury had a complete meltdown. So you can understand why Levi would be hesitant here, and talks as if he is walking on eggshells, and throughout explaining his criticisms, he handles things very delicately as to not set Fury off again. 
and people right, love but to what watch I, it. What I want to know is what you wanted to say last night. What is what is the conversation that you have with your friends behind closed doors about me? So I don't want you to be afraid or timid now that you can't say what you want to say. No, well, I think I said everything. I, I, everything that I said last night is, you know, that's. I want you to elaborate on it, because I want to get somewhere with that. I think that's sort of all I had to say. You know, I don't, I don't have that much. I have, I, I have no ill will towards you. I don't. I don't like, have no ill will towards you either. Yeah. Well, I, I have no ill will towards anybody that thinks differently than me about Star Wars or, or how they think I can run my channel or can't run my channel or whatever. It's at the end of the day, I'm going to keep doing what I do and I'm going to keep growing. I wish you would give me a little bit more regard in regards to last night. I feel like you're kind of a little bit quiet now. But, well, I, um, like I said, I'm I'm sorry. I'm I'm a bit tired, but I I feel like I. I've summarized my point, but I, I can go into more depth if you'd like. I think go I, for it. Yeah, I mean if we're here. Oh, I, I just don't. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to do the same thing again, right? I want to. It won't because now time. now I'm open to it and I'm saying, okay. yeah, you know. Okay, I, I just want to make sure, man. I want to make sure that I don't want to step on any toes again. I because you so generously brought me back on, right? You're, you're giving me the second chance within 24 hours. Like that's that's so incredibly, like. I believe people can change, man. I'm, it's not, not like a big deal. And this brings us to the following year in 2022, where Fury once again proves he doesn't like what others have to say about him when it's in a negative light, despite of once saying that he sees negative comments as criticism. And it's no different when Fury had made a video going over said negative comments in Speaking Up Finally, where he responds to a comment section on a random TikTok video that had shown his reaction alongside others to the Lego game The Skywalker Saga, where he says everyone is entitled to their own opinion but shows how he is threatened by these opinions, by saying they are just out to get him, or they are making accusations towards him through a comment section. When the comments had said that Fury is making content solely just for the monetary gain, which isn't quite what comes to mind when you hear the word accusation being used here. So while he may see negative comments as criticism, he certainly can't take the heat. So maybe he shouldn't be looking for these types of comments if he knows he can't handle seeing the words of random people and should just ignore it. I kind of love these videos because I get to talk to you guys a little bit about who I am and maybe dissolve some of these accusations about me that that people make, you know, because I, they see this guy's got a big channel, oh, he makes a lot of money, makes a lot of views. Like The next time you guys have like an idea about me, I just, I want you to second guess it. Be like, yo, am I like maybe talking out of perhaps some sort of something that I've heard from someone else or a comment I've read and I'm blindly following it or is this actually legitimate? Do, is, this, is this guy actually a piece of shit? Is he actually, you know, just faking it for income? It's like, or is he maybe just being himself and people are maybe just jealous or envious or angry, whatever? I, I don't know. I can't answer that. You know, that's for them to decide. Some shot of this as they're going. Don't. In. Okay, so this one's nice and flush. Now this one here is on the mortar joint. I'm not too sure how it's going to go, but we'll, we'll give it a go here. Beautiful. So, I'll show you these two here. With nearly every show of Disney Star Wars getting a negative reception as time had gone on, it seemed that Star Wars would never recover and had been spiraling out of control. However, all of that had changed when a new story had been brought to the table with the action thriller Andor, which has surprisingly gotten a positive reception amongst fans and critics alike. But where this show had been praised, there had been a minority who did not like the new show, and one of them had been Star Wars Fury, where he told us that it had been an interesting and fun time watching, but also how it was boring, making him fall asleep a million times, and how it was too slow paced for him, which his audience certainly did not agree with these comments. And after the pushback from the community, Fury certainly changed his tune in the later episodes. But after the finale, what he thought had been good about the show dissolves into his first thoughts, with it being boring and slow paced, where after his reaction to the last episode, the real treat begins when Fury had tried to think of anything that could back up his opinion about the show being bad, which is where he comes out with the infamous meme of bricks and screws. It didn't feel like Star Wars to me. It's just whatever. It's honestly a kind of a forgettable show. Um, look, acting was great. 
the cinematography was great, the budget was great, the writing was good, but it was just a lot of little things. I mean, when we saw the camera in the previous episode, there were like screws in the wall. When we see certain architecture, it's just bricks. You know, it's not smooth stone or sandstone or whatever it might be that was in the prequels or the originals, which kind of gives you the feel of Star Wars. The whole thing about Star Wars is to feel like it's from a galaxy far, far away. Um, it didn't do that with this one. The guns, the blasters, they look like actual guns. You know, little things like that took me out of it. Um, I feel like it dragged on a lot in a lot of episodes that didn't need to. Uh, there were a lot of moments that really took took a lot. I think my favorite part of the show was probably the, the whole prison um, episodes, I would guess. But beyond that, that eh, show was pretty boring for me. I wasn't really into it. It was okay. You know, it just goes to show that for me, great acting and um, good dialogue aren't enough. So what broke immersion for Fury had been the fact that bricks and screws were visible in the show because he doesn't think something as simple as bricks and screws belongs in Star Wars because the story is meant to take place in a galaxy far, far away. When the original saga, or as many people call it, the George Lucas Star Wars, had bricks and screws on full display as well. It's almost like each planet or civilization has their own type of architecture, based on the resources the planet has to offer. And Fury is supposed to be the, uh, the Star Wars guy? As a native New Yorker, I feel represented that New York is on the bottom of Luke's lightsaber. Screws and bolts used in ship manufacturing mostly. Just countless screws and bolts. But later, Fury had taken this a step further, taking the meme and turning it into his personal merch. I suppose if you do go viral for spewing absolute nonsense on the internet, you might as well make a buck off of it. Which is something I really think is cool, and it's a lot better how some people handle being turned into a meme. The average meme exists in public consciousness for like a week. Ethan, this is just sick behavior. For 14 pages! You remember this guy? It's Bro, 14 if you pages! Just I wrote 14 pages! If you see what his fans say about this, they're not like, oh, we didn't know you felt that way, man. We were just joking around. It's fuck off, pussy. Harassment's great for views, bro. Harden the fuck up. If Ethan wants to mock you to hundreds of thousands of people every fucking day for the rest of your life, that's that's his business. But in his later review of the entire show, Fury had told his audience how the show had some good moments, but also that the character Cyril had been one of the most useless characters in the show, and that the scenes that revolved around him were just boring. But in a nutshell, Fury had been watching an action thriller when he wanted to see an action-adventure show with lightsabers. And again, his audience gave him even more of a pushback on this, telling Fury he didn't know what he was talking about. But I guarantee you, if Dave Filoni had made Andor, then Fury would have called it a masterpiece, considering he thinks Dave is the frickin' messiah of Star Wars. If you ever understood anything from George Lucas' Star Wars, is that you have to have faith, you have to have hope. Not hope in Disney Star Wars. Hope in Dave Filoni Star Wars, and there's a big difference. When Dave is the man behind the camera, behind the pencil, you get a completely different product. You get something that is very close to, it's not, it's not George Lucas Star Wars, but very close to George Lucas Star Wars. And I think that's something a lot of people miss. And their, their pure hatred and their blindness for Disney. As we come into 2023, Fury had made an update for his fans, telling them that he had changed the animation style of his second fan film and adapting it to the style of the Arcane series due to how costly things had become. And his audience had appreciated the update along with the hard work he had been putting into it, but he also told them that he had been in the process of creating his own batch of lightsabers from Star Wars, with each hilt being from the various Star Wars media, including the expanded universe, which are of better quality than that of the Disney versions. But when we come to the price, there certainly is a difference here as well, with Fury Sabers ranging from $100 for the standard ones, to well over $1000, which is a bit overpriced for being what they are. However, when it came to the Star Wars celebration, Fury had made a Twitter green screen video where he tried to convey this as a joke, but it's clear that he felt entitled to a free ticket to the event because he is a big channel. 
Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, I'm just at the airport here and I'm waiting on my ticket to go to the UK, the celebration. I can't wait to see you guys. And I saw a lot of the other Star Wars YouTubers and everyone got sent out by Lucasfilm. And, you know, they're having a good time. And uh, well, I, I can't, I, I'm, I'm waiting for mine. I think it got lost in the mail or something. So you know how they are, they just get busy with stuff. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna wait around here for a bit. I'll keep you guys updated, but yeah, it should come in any minute now. And I'll see you guys soon. Okay. All right. Um, who do you think you are? Me? You don't know me? Why don't you look at this? Anakin Skywalker, Anakin Skywalker, Anakin Skywalker prequels, George Lucas, Anakin Skywalker prequels, yeah. prequels, George, George, Anakin, oh my Anakin God. Skywalker, George Skywalker. 3.3 million. That's right. Roll up the red carpet. We got a celebrity over here. He's got to get his way to Star Wars Celebration. Everybody clear the airport. Sir, come with me. You're getting our private jet right now. I'm sure Disney's waiting for you. We don't want to upset them. I'm sorry for the missing Thank company. you very much. I'll see you guys soon. I told you. Yeah, whatever you say, buddy, you were probably creaming yourself when watching those flashbacks again, eh? I really enjoyed that flashback. And if anything, I actually wouldn't mind an entire movie on just that storyline. Later, someone on Twitter criticized him for the type of community he is building, telling him that they are becoming toxic, even clarifying that they aren't talking about him. But there is certainly an issue at play here. Fury replies, Fully disagree with your statements on my channel. I have the most kind and loving fanbase out there. You just choose to focus on the minority of assholes that most subscriber bases have. That isn't special to the community, but to the person. Those types of people are everywhere. Why not focus on all the good and respectful subs I have? Because it doesn't fit your narrative that I'm the bad guy. That's okay. Someone has to take that role. When did the other person say that Fury was a bad guy here? This led to one of Fury's past associates getting involved, calling Fury out on his crap, criticizing Fury for how dismissive of the issue he is, instead of recognizing there might be an issue with his audience, but he just ignores it. Fury replies with, Ah, you. When I get attacked by people like you daily, receiving death threats, great threats to my ex, does anyone come to my aid? Nope. I have to just take it. If you think smaller creators get those messages, imagine how many I get. Thousands of you daily berate me online, make a monster of me and vilify me for talking about Star Wars. But if I defend myself against the disgusting lies and constant bashing people like you do with me, I'm the monster, you're all the victim? Why? How is that fair? Because I worked hard, to have a large YouTube channel because of the money? What's the real reason here? One has to really question. I don't endorse bullying or any of those horrible things you people bring my way on the daily or any of that sent to anyone else. I've actually gone out and made videos, posts and tweets about how I don't endorse that. Remember Levi? Remember all of the others? I know you do, because when you used to be my fake friend, it's a discussion we had many times on the phone or in DM about the abuse I always get, and you'd always say how ridiculous and unfair it was to me. And here you are, switch sides, and part talking in the garbage people say about me. You used to be my friend, but I guess that's only when I could give you clout. Fake as fuck. For the record, don't send anyone R in deference. That includes to me either. But we all know that's not going to stop with you, nutjobs. Be peace and leave me alone. Sawyer then responds like so. Ah, me. You gave your audience to me. Yes. I will never sit here and say you didn't do anything for me. But I wasn't your fake friend. I stopped being your friend when you started asking Andor fans what drugs they were on and recommending Andrew Tate videos. I can't support that. 
I think women receive unconditional love. I think men receive conditional love. I don't think really there are too many women. There are some. I don't think there are too many women out there that will appreciate or love a man unconditionally, right? But men will unconditionally love women and children because we don't want anything from them. We just want peace of mind. We want love. We want loyalty, respect, communication. That's it. And sex. You know, a home, a partner, someone that you can confide in. But I think for many women, it's, um, I think it's very conditional for, for them. What can the man give me? What can he provide? What is he doing? If he's not doing this, well, I'm going to go on to fucking Steve or Greg or Tommy or what, whoever, right? And Fury fires back with, You should stick to your own rules and not talk about me anymore. That includes in your private groups with your echo chamber, who have said the most disgusting and heinous things about me that I would love to post. I have eyes everywhere sending me things. I know everything said about me. I just choose to turn the other way. It's not exactly a wonder why Fury would claim that he had no friends growing up if this is the way he talks to people. And I love the last sentence. I have eyes everywhere. I know everything said about me. I guess it's true what some say. Lol cows really do think they are playing Game of Thrones. However, I do think that people aren't exactly being fair here since Fury has told his fans to be respectful of others' opinions, regardless of which side of the fandom they reside in. But the problem with Fury is he is a complete spurg who runs with emotions and comes up with his own interpretation of why people are criticizing him rather than just looking at what's in front of him, often taking these critiques very personally, which makes any kind of conversation you could have with Fury, very unproductive. After this, Fury had spoken on being blacklisted from Disney, with the reasoning being a bit too familiar for me. No, man, they hate me. Oh, <laughs> uh, really? Why, they yeah, they don't like. Why, yeah, why they not? Like. Yeah, they they blacklisted me. Uh, I know a bunch. I know a bunch of guys that wanted to work with me, like big companies, uh -huh. and um, they were like, <laughs> they were like, we we don't know what happened. We you know we asked Disney, and they uh, they don't want to work with you. Why is it always about people being haters with this guy? I find it so very convenient that he makes the because they hate me argument, which wouldn't have anything to do with him not being sent a free ticket to the celebration, right? While waiting for the next show under Dave Filoni's belt, Fury had brought out a new update on the fan film, which didn't sit too well with some of his fans, where Fury had told them he had been scammed out of his money by some shifty characters, where he paid them $30,000 to do a job, but it seems like they just ran away with the money, which isn't very smart on his part. See, I would have paid a small fee at the beginning to get the ball rolling, and then paid the rest upon completion. That way you have insurance that the work will be completed, and if they don't complete the work, then you would have only lost a small amount of money, not the full amount. I've been taken advantage of so many times ever since I started my channel, uh, just because of the goodness of my heart. And I didn't believe people would, you know, try to undercut me or, you know, bind me into some sort of a contract or anything like that. But after about seven years, I can say that I've pretty much seen a lot at this point. Uh, I've been scammed a lot, I've been lied to a lot, I've been swindled a lot, and um, it's getting harder and harder to do that to me, which is good. Well, obviously not, Fury, seeming as you just said that you got scammed out of 30000 to $35,000. I'm out about thirty dollars to $35,000 USD now. With the Ahsoka show releasing new episodes each week, Fury had taken a shine to the new content, defending the show from the criticisms it had received, such as Sabine being able to survive a lightsaber to the chest, where I don't disagree that maybe Sabine could have survived based on where she had been struck, but it certainly adds to the pattern that we have seen from Disney Star Wars, and Fury in his attempts to explain this goes completely overboard, trying to defend this scene with a shaky defense at best, which only achieved a blow to Fury's credibility within the community. And there had been a moment from one of the episodes he reacted to where Fury had claimed that one of the scenes had been from his script. Dude, that's 
from my script. Someone leaked my episode 2 and 3 script. Which if Fury actually thinks this, then it implies that Fury thinks he is so famous that Lucasfilms would actually think to take one of his conceptions and put it in their show. But Fury had been critical of the last two episodes of the show, which came down to a disappointing conclusion for him when he saw that the viewership hadn't been all that high like he hoped for, which would lead him into making a rant about the state of Star Wars in I'm done here, Disney is destroying Star Wars, what a joke rant, where we get to see the five stages of grief for a franchise, where he brings up that Kenobi had a smaller budget than that of She-Hulk, and that had been the factor that made fans turn away from the show, which isn't quite how things work. You can't just throw money at a showrunner and expect a masterpiece. The thing that turned fans away had been the poor writing, management, and execution of the story. And that wouldn't have changed if Disney threw another mill at the showrunner. Obi-Wan Kenobi, the most important Star Wars project since Disney purchased Lucasfilm from George Lucas in 2012. And it gets the lowest budget of any Star Wars show to date. She-Hulk gets a better budget than Obi-Wan? Freaking She-Hulk. I mean, what the hell, man? Like. Who is making these decisions up there? I'm sorry to make this kind of video, dude, but honestly, like, who is making those decisions up there? You wonder why Star Wars is in such a state where no one is interested anymore. Nobody gives a crap. It's because of shit like this. I, I don't get it. I, I don't... I'm trying... As, like, I'm trying to understand this. I'm really trying to... Who's, make, who's making these decisions, dude? Let's give this script the crappiest script of all time, let's regress the characters, and then let's give them the lowest budget of, our, of the most important story in Star Wars, the most important characters in Star Wars, but let's just literally give them the bare minimum, but focus all of our attention in Andor, which yes, Andor is a great show for everyone who attended film school and wants to eat their cheese with a French hat so they can twiddle their mustache at the same time and talk about the Renaissance era and how great things were back then while they sip on their wine from 1922. Okay, don't get me wrong. I liked Andor. I liked it. It was a good show. It was fine. It was cozy. It was also extremely boring and made me fall asleep a million times while I was watching it. It's almost like I can feel the conflict within him. Like he has a voice in his head saying, Don't be a shill. Don't be a shill. But it was still a good show. I, whatever, I enjoyed it. Just sleepy time, okay? Like, you want me want to put to sleep? You watch Andor. You want Star Wars? You watch Obi-Wan Kenobi. You watch Revenge of the Sith. You don't watch Obi-Wan Kenobi, you watch a Revenge of the Sith. You're watching... So I'm, I'm going Italian now. That 6% Italian is coming out and I'm starting to get a little bit angry here. You create the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. But not the way it was written by Joby Harold and directed by Deborah Chow. I'm sorry, was that supposed to convey the old triggered meme? I'm so tired of being... Trying to be so nice to people. Man, I don't care if you don't like what I have to say. Don't watch my videos. I'm not here for them. I'm here for me. I'm here for Star Wars, George Lucas, and to protect the legacy because quite frankly, dude, I'm the only one that keeps doing it. And they make clips of me on TikTok or whatever, they can keep doing it, but I'm literally the only one who keeps driving the point home. Maybe you should write a book called How to Alienate a Community in Six Minutes. Does nobody see this? And we're all just standing around like, hey, it's okay. We got Andor. Andor's the best Star Wars we've ever... It's not. It's Blade Runner with a Star Wars theme. It's not bad. I love Blade Runner. Go to my Theory Talks channel. I'm always playing Blade Runner music. But that doesn't mean it's a good show for Star Wars. The Last Jedi was the most asinine representation of a continuation of Luke Skywalker's story that I've ever seen in my life. Yet it was a good movie. It just wasn't a good Star Wars movie. What the heck? I just, I don't... After this, other YouTubers had reacted to Fury's rant, and one of them had been Mauler, who jumped into a call with Fury to pick his brain over some of the things that had led up to this moment, where we get the confirmation of Fury feeling like he needed to be a fence-sitter when covering the new Star Wars media, as to not be classed as a shill or a hater of new Star Wars, effectively becoming the middleman behind the divided fandom. They just did this constantly with all of these films. They had a disjointed script, and so it left me very pissed off. And all the while, I'm still trying to be very hopeful 
and say, okay, well, you know, I, I don't want to be toxic, which is just speaking my opinion, and I don't want to be a shill. I was in a position where, like, I, I am the largest Star Wars channel, and so I'm, I'm kind of like, I, I don't want to propagate anger and hatred, and I don't want to propagate um, being a shill. But when it came to defending his position on Luke's cameo at the end of The Mandalorian Season 2, he couldn't make a decent argument about why Luke, a character Fury adores by the way, wouldn't want to know more about the current situation, which Mauler makes quite a few good arguments as to why Luke would ask more questions about what had transpired before his arrival. I feel like you have the same sort of thoughts about Luke when he entered the room in Mando Season 2 finale, where he, he just didn't really ask questions, he was just pretty calm and quiet. But that's yeah. who Luke is. Like, he doesn't need to ask questions because the questions that he needs answered, he already knows the answer to. And if he, he doesn't, would, he doesn't matter. because he's gonna He wouldn't be able to have a lot of the answers for why these people are here exactly and what their nature is and what they've done. He doesn't care. Right? Luke doesn't care? I don't think he cares. No. Because he, he, he is sitting up here where he's come to take the child. Everyone else with their own problems or whatever it might be, it doesn't matter to him. He's on a different journey. So I... Don't buy it, I'm sorry. I think that Luke would be very invested in knowing how this all came to be, why they're even on this particular ship, who's, what the, why were the robots after them, what's going on here? Like, and to get to know people, Luke's a very personable guy. Yeah. And remember, Fury said that he knew the original Star Wars saga better than anyone. Yes, I do think I have a very good understanding of what Star Wars is. First six films, I think I know it better than pretty much anybody. So surely he could give a better reason as to why Luke wouldn't want to know more about the situation that led the group to being in their predicament in the first place. Following this conversation, Fury had told his audience that he will be returning to form, going over the lore and story of the Legend era, which is certainly what he does best. However, he later changed his tune once again, and went back to covering articles, Star Wars news, and reviewing the shows. But Fury had then posted a video to his Instagram, showing an animation for a future video which had been created using AI to create a deepfake of Luke Skywalker, which had been posted to Twitter with the person asking asking Mark Hamill if he gave Fury permission to use his likeness, to which he said no. And Fury had taken this reply to heart, so much so that he made a video going over it in Mark Hamill doesn't like me? Well this sucks. Which is interesting since Mark said nothing of the sort and Fury is the same guy who says the headers to articles are just clickbait which he makes sure to inform us when going over the replies to the thread that he isn't going anywhere. Yeah, I'm not going anywhere. So, uh, I'm not gonna stop. I, I, I don't think anyone wants him to go anywhere. He then says something that would haunt him over the current year. When I was a kid, in the 90s and 2000s, we're not talking about these new age Star Wars fans that Disney has amassed. It wasn't really all that cool to be talking about Star Wars all the time. It was more of like a hush-hush secret thing, but only amongst your friends and nerds and geeks, real geeks. Like now, I, now you have like e-girls being like, I'm such a nerd, I'm such a geek. It's like, no, you're an opportunist. What? Which an opportunist is someone who takes advantage of opportunities as and when they arise, regardless of ethics or morals or any of their own principles. So keep that in mind as this will come up again. This video just bottles down to Fury believing that people are just jealous, angry, or are wanting to tear him down. You know, I understand that people will always be jealous or angry or want to shut me down because I have a large voice. It's never going to stop me. I'm never going to go away. I, you have to realize I'm literally like an iron hide at this point. Like, Yeah, I really think of someone having an iron hide when they moan about being bullied throughout their life. And I, it just reinforces more and more of just the kind of bullying that I've had to deal with for the last eight years. You are truly a thick-skinned warrior of the internet, my friend. And that is it for part one. Join me for the next part of the Lol Cal Theory Saga, where we get even more grand moments from Theory claiming someone had stolen one of his ideas for a live-action Clone Wars show, all the way to claiming Star Wars Explained had been trying to destroy his livelihood since 2016. 16 with nothing but a couple of emails and pure anecdotal evidence to back up his narrative. So be on the lookout for that.
Thank you for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed and look forward to seeing what you have to say about this story in the comments down below. Be sure to share this video out and sign up to join the British Alliance today by subscribing and turning all notifications on so you never miss an upload. And if you want to see the videos earlier than everyone else, along with having your name up here with the rest, then consider becoming a member today and I will see you all next time. And be sure to leave having a good one.